Uh, hi, uh, I'm Chris, and I work at Neufund. So briefly uh, speaking, Neufund is trying to build decentralized NASDAQ when you can invest in uh, securities in the companies and you know don't get uh, don't uh, end up in jail because we are fully compliant so uh, okay so word type uh, um, happens in our in my title of the talk three times so this talk is going to be about types and type safety uh, while communicating with blockchain so let me start with how many people here use typescript uh, in production already okay we have some <laughs> people so that's good uh, so let me start with a pretty bold statement like JavaScript is pretty good language by some JavaScript devs so <laughs> what I mean by this is that in the past JavaScript was pretty uh, meme language like uh, it there were a lots of odd behaviors like scoping rules or you know one plus empty array gives you something something weird so there's like a lot of uh, implicit conversions going on and so on and people you know m m used to make fun of uh, JavaScript but the modern JavaScript like for example this code looks nothing like you know JavaScript from five years ago we have now dedicated syntax sugar for uh, creating classes like you would it looks like in Java even though it's just a, syn a, syn a syntactic sugar on top of prototypical inheritance and so on but you know it looks similar for two other languages which makes people happy <laughs> uh, there's also arrow there are also arrow functions that uh, tend to solve the issues with the uh, function context, at least to some point. Uh, and for example, we got also dedicated syntax for uh, await uh, for working with promises, which is pretty awesome thing to have since JavaScript is inherently asynchronous language. But even with all of these uh, improvements, JavaScript is still dynamic language and even Simple col uh, s in the simple uh, code snippets, we have bug like on line three. We forgot to await or I don't know catch an error in the promise. So we're just this is called floating promise when we forget to handle it. And if the promise would throw, we would have very hard time uh, finding the error. So TypeScript is even better language. This is uh, an attempt to fix all these problems and sneak type safety into JavaScript without changing the language itself. So uh, it turns out that we don't have to introduce any changes to the first code snippet. This is a valid, fully valid TypeScript code when a uh, TypeScript compiler can infer type, for example, of the meow uh, function to return a promise of void. So TypeScript compiler is pretty good at guessing the types. Uh, and here, the same code as previously. Uh, we're gonna, uh, just by using um, very um, basic static analysis, we can find things like floating promises. So even though TypeScript compiler doesn't really care about this such, such errors, it allows built tools on top of the uh, TypeScript language services and so on that will, very, uh, that will find these mistakes in a very uh, easy manner. So this is just a type uh, TS lint or uh, no fr floating promises that, for example, will will find it when we have a promise that we forgot to handle in any way. So you can think about TypeScript as a JavaScript with types. So on the left, we see JavaScript code, and on the right, TypeScript code. So you see that we needed to provide some type hints, I mean, types, really, type informations for arguments of the function, but return types get inferred, and also like this, uh, function assign uh, variable assignment the type gets inferred based on uh, based on the uh, return type of the function so we don't need to put the types everywhere but probably you should because having like explicit uh, function signatures is a rather good thing to have so you might think that okay so if JavaScript is almost like Java hence the name <laughs> then TypeScript is like definitely like Java right or, or C sharp it turns out that it's not true. Like TypeScript type system is pretty unique, so uh, it's it's structure. It ha it features structural typing. So in Java, if you have a, a Java uh, features uh, nominal typing. So if you have two classes with the same set of fields but with different names, these are totally different types. 
In TypeScript, on the other hand, the shape of an object determines if this uh, objects are has the, have the same types or not. So this is this is something that goes very well with duck typing from JavaScript. So if something walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then probably it's a duck. So this is the same principle, but expressed on the in the type level uh, type safety manner. Uh, so um, TypeScript also has some pretty advanced type level uh, features, like for example conditional types or map types, that allows us to create, for example, if you write a React Redux application, we can have, we can create fully typed uh, messages actions uh, in Redux. So when you act upon the action uh, in Redusters, you know exactly what the payload is, for example, and this is fully type safe. The same goes, for example, for creating the uh, event emitters with you know uh, um, the nodes event emitter, so you do on and the uh, and the string really uh, that uh, identifies the the event, and we can also make this type safe, so we don't need to you know change the way that we write JavaScript to to make it uh, fully type safe. So types are entirely stripped out in uh, from the output, so in the end it's just JavaScript. And having these types allows us for building tools that uh, allow uh, advanced refactoring. So, you know, advanced refactoring, like for example, renaming symbols. <laughs> this doesn't work in JavaScript at all, and this is like the very basic thing that you should have. Uh, and you know, with TypeScript, all of this works. Also, uh, this type system is gra uh, gradual, so you don't have to put types everywhere. You can put any. Any is a type that you can do whatever you want with. So it doesn't also force you to use types everywhere, but you should. Uh, so let's get back to the blockchain world. So uh, currently interacting, to, if you would want to communicate with blockchain, probably you would use uh, Web3, or more or less the same applies for, for other uh, frameworks. Like uh, we create, we, we feed, uh, we create based on ABI definition, some kind of contract wrapper, and then in, we initiate it on, on a given address, and then we can call uh, uh, call some some methods, pure methods, or we can create uh, transactions and call some and create yeah and send it to blockchain. So there are multiple things wrong in, with this code example. Like first of all, Web3 works in the way that if you would initiate a contract on an address that it's empty without code, it will happily invoke any calls and just return zeros instead of real answers. So like developer experience is really not that great. Uh, uh, other problems include, like, you know, if you communicate with a uh, smart contract, you need to browse all the time ABI or original source code because we have no documentation. You don't know what, what are the methods, what are the arguments. And also, Web3 likes to, you know, uh, convert your arguments uh, in a weird manner. So, you know, you need to be careful. And uh, also, like, there's a huge problem that you don't know really which method is pure and which will expect you to produce transaction, which is another pain in the ass to, to work with. Uh, so enter type chain. So type chain solves all these problems by generating uh, typed wrappers based on the uh, based on uh, ABI definition. So it takes ABI, generates a TypeScript wrapper, and this happens as a separate build step. So you would do it uh, normally before compi a compilation step. So let me briefly show you how it works. So imagine that we have some smart contract, actually named dump contract, because it doesn't do anything. And we have a bunch of methods uh, and uh, events and a uh, bunch of uh, transactions. And based on this, we run type chain with a command more or less like this, so we just specify a globe pattern to, to find all the ABI files, and then it will generate uh, wrappers like this. So um, constructor of this wrapper expects that you will provide web free uh, instance and the address that the contract lives in, and ABI definition is in line from the JSON file, and then we have a bunch of wrappers on the methods that were uh, that will be produced by web3 in the runtime but here it's fully type safe so if you would like to i don't know check out what we can do 
then I don't know, calling counter. This is actually a getter only. So <laughs> actually, there's an issue on GitHub that oh, people don't like that the getter. Uh, you don't need to call it because it's just a getter. But anyways, you can uh, work with events and. Uh, you know, I, I, the cool thing is that I don't really need to remember what I need to do because, you know, you just t uh, t uh, type command space and you get all the, uh, all, the con uh, all the methods of the given contract. So, yeah, it supports transactions, pure methods, and so on. So, uh, continuing. Uh, so as I said, it's fully statically typed. So based on API, uh, we can generate APIs. We can generate all the uh, needed uh, wrappers. It has full IDS, ID support because it's just TypeScript. If your ID supports TypeScript, it supports TypeChain. Um, so API has lots of tweaks and safety checks that allow for better developer experience. For example, there's a method create and validate, which you can use to, to uh, to initiate the, the smart contract, and this method will make sure that actually the contract is deployed. So maybe it's not so useful in production, but it's super great for uh, for why you develop things because you know Ghana check crashes, you restart it, and then your contract is not there, and you're you know just wasting time. Um, so it's fully compatible with uh, with existing uh, libraries because it uses Web3 in the uh, under the hood. And it's extensible. The wrappers that were created by TypeChain, you just can extend them and introduce additional checks or whatever you want. Um, so why would you want to use it? You, you could see me clearly that I could just you know, type command space and get all the list of the smart contract. And you know, it saves me a lot of time and irritation, really. Uh, and another great feature is that it can greatly help when you migrate uh, your smart contracts because then you just provide new ABI, you regenerate the wrappers, and then you get all the breaking changes in your APIs by the, uh, found by the TypeScript compiler automatically for you. So this is a pretty cool use case. Uh, so what are the plans for future? Currently, um, current standard for ABI uh, is quite limiting. Uh, what I'm saying is that, for example, imagine that uh, most of the times you don't work with single smart contracts. You work with a whole set of smart contracts, the graph, you could say. So ABI strips out the information about connection between the smart contracts because it's just an address for the ABI. So if you would say in Solidity that you have a variable that is a, of a type of another contract, in ABI it will be just an address. So this is something that could be improved. Um, I, I remember a talk from yesterday about the uh, compiler metadata JSON. So this is probably one way to solve it. Another way would be to introduce, to expand the ABI probably by some new EAP uh, and improve it uh, by, uh, for, for add, uh, add, for example, the m metadata to API, ABI definition, for example. Uh, Another thing that we're looking at is user-defined templates. So currently, TypeChain forces you to use uh, the smart contract in a certain way. What we could do in the future is just allow users to provide you know, mustache, template, or whatever, and generate the smart contracts based on, you know, to, to fit your needs, really what you need. And uh, currently, TypeChain uses Web3 uh, 2 point something, a zero <laughs> zero dot uh, to something because it was the most stable version that we used and we stick to this but I think that 1.0 is on the horizon and probably we should migrate but anyways if we would allow user defined template templates then user could you know write the template to use web3 or etherjs or whatever suits you so TypeChain is fully uh, open source. It's available on, on GitHub. And we got pretty a lot of traction, I would say. Uh, there are at least two, ad, uh, two startups other than Neufund using it. Uh, we get some pretty nice uh, community contributions. Like, for example, event support was done only partially because we don't, didn't really need it, but someone needed. So he added it. Uh, so you know, feel free to check it out on GitHub. This is my Twitter. You can also follow me. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you.